Okay, so what we're looking at here is a schematic that I drew up that uh, Marsha posted on her website on YouTube. And what it is is a residential uh, energy system that uh, is may be able to produce a lot more than 10 kilowatts of energy. Uh, and some of these systems, some of these components of the system are, are optional. But at the root of it, uh, it's based on the water fuel cell, which is here. Now I'll zoom in just to see it, because the resolution is kind of small. The water fuel cell, a device invented by Stan Meyer, uh, uh, is the, the, the very main component of the system. From the water fuel cell, it creates the oxyhydrogen gas, which is fed, let me see if I can move this, this up, let me see. The oxyhydrogen gas is fed into a quasi-turbine. Now I can click on the I can click on this quasi turbine and it'll go to the website. But uh, for I'll do that later on. But I'm going to follow the the train here. Uh, the gas is burned into the quasi turbine, which turns a 10 kilowatt alternator. The 10 kilowatt alternator is being fed uh, is being turned continuously from the quasi turbine, which uh, uh, is runs pretty much all the time. Now the 10 kilowatt generator has a shaft that uh, is also tied into a gearbox and that gear uh, now it, which can also be run on the motor if the oxyhydrogen uh, gas isn't producing or if that if the water fuel cell has to be maintained this motor can kick in and also turn the hydrosonic pump. Now the hydrosonic pump is basically a device that uh, just uh, is fed water in and it spins, and uh, these these holes in the in the inside cylinder. This is a cutaway view. These the the holes basically pound uh, create these uh, uh, great velocities of water turning around, and it, and it creates steam energy just from the water being pounded around inside the cylinder. But uh, and the steam can then be used to um, now see if I can travel over here. Now the steam that comes out of the uh, hydrosonic pump can then be fed into a uh, water heater. Now I've also on this end of the system, it could be the same one, but this is basically providing uh, heat. Now let me travel back up again to see the, so you can see the coolant system uh, the, or the heat exchanger system. Ste steam out of the uh, hydrosonic pump travels up into another system. Now this is this is a uh, Stirling generator, uh, uh, a Stirling engine that, uh, that is hooked up to a linear alternator. And this uh, this and this, now this is tied into uh, an optional solar uh, dish. Now the solar dish, solar uh, light comes down, collects and bounces off of this smaller dish, and then uh, all the heat is is uh, uh, transferred to this this part of the uh, Stirling engine. But it, uh, I thought that it could also be turned around if, uh, during the nighttime, and the same coolant system can be used to run heat uh, as a heat exchanger off of the uh, hydrosonic pump. And in that case, when uh, it, during nighttime, the uh, the Stirling engine can be swivel around, and then the heat uh, could be uh, from the oxyhydrogen gas that's off the secondary water fuel cell could be used as a heat source to power it, or it could also just run directly off of the um, uh, the heat exchange system, the heat loop. So you can get hot water from the uh, hydrosonic pump. You can also get a hot water from the uh, from the heat from the sun. And uh, it's it, it's a multi. It's a very uh, uh, um, redundant system. But it doesn't all have to be. Uh, all these components do not have to be installed. Uh, basically, you could just start off with a water fuel cell here on the right on the right hand side of the screen. It goes to the hydro, uh, to the quasi turbine, which uh, it, it should take full advantage of the uh, implosive prop, uh, properties of the oxyhydrogen gas. Uh, and uh, so this is the quasi turbine is basically turning now uh, after the gas is the uh, oxyhydrogen gas is burned in the quasi turbine, the water uh, is condensed. It, it goes back out and feeds into the water fuel cell again into a closed loop system. 
Uh, now, there's also, uh, I, I realized recently that there is a, 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 an electron extraction circuit on the oxyhydrogen, on the, I'm sorry, on the water fuel cell. Now, I found this out from a George Wenberg interview that you can also find on Marsha Mello's uh, YouTube site, an interview where uh, George Wenberg is being interviewed by where he mentions the fact that the oxyhydrogen gas that's collected uh, uh, can also uh, uh, produce a, a voltage or a current uh, if, if the electron extraction circuit is uh, installed. So I have the uh, not only the water going back to the water fuel cell again after it burns in the quasi turbine, but there's an electrical uh, load that, go, that is siphoned off of the, t the top. I'm not sure about the wattage. I said 300 watts, but uh, if you'll notice, so it's turning the 10, 10 kilowatt generator, and I'm assuming this is inverted back into DC so it can be stored into a deep cycle lead uh, lead acid battery system, and from there it goes. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. Um, let me move down and over oops I went the wrong direction here it's a little bit difficult with this device now you can see the battery system I, I figured that I could take advantage now you could just use a deep cycle lead uh, deep cycle uh, battery which is basically a lead acid battery with the with the uh, lead plates being thicker is what a deep cycle battery is but let me uh, go back up to where you can see the water fuel cell. Now I have, I, I'm assuming it might be 300 watts coming into it, and it might be the water fuel cell might take up uh, 100 watts going into it. it might be a lot. Uh, this device here is a uh, is something I discovered recently. I'll get it, I'll get to that later. Uh, but it could be a way that you could uh, store electrical energy directly from pure hydrogen. Of course, you don't get pure hydrogen off of a water fuel cell. You get oxygen and hydrogen in the stoichiometric uh, gas coming off of it but um, but I uh, but you can store in these are uh, 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 nickel metal hydride batteries that uh, you can recharge directly from the hydrogen itself so uh, these are optional but um, I tied them together into a system that uh, the the uh, nickel metal hydride batteries are optional, but the lead acid batteries are, are the uh, other com the storage component of the system. Now they go into an inverter uh, so that, it, that turns the DC into AC, and um, I'm uh, imagining if you want to sell the energy back to the electrical grid, that uh, you, you would want it to match the, the phase of, of the grid, and uh, that's that's key to be able to sell your energy back um, into the electrical grid uh, the phase matching is, is critical and um, and so I'm assuming uh, the uh, en energy so selling back to the grid would be 220 volts uh, uh, AC at 20 amps and the phase would be synchronized to match the grid uh, let me zoom out 